Hey everyone, welcome to Rockfish Farm. Today we are going to be frost seeding. So I am standing here in our horse pasture, if you can even call it a pasture. <laughs> it is full of red Virginia clay and very, very little grass here. So I'm excited to try this method. I've been researching it for a little over a year. We kind of missed our opportunity with it last year. And so I'm excited to try it this year. We typically lay grass seed in, you know, close to, to May. And in the past, what I'm seeing happening is it takes and it comes up, but it gets so hot so fast here in Southern Virginia that it just burns right out. And so we have not had success with that other method. So I'm excited to try this uh, frost seeding method. So obviously for frost seeding, you want to do it when it is still cold outside. So late winter, early spring, the ideal time would be February 1st through March 10th. Now we are here in January and, you know, our, our winter has been mild except for a recent like cold spell uh, where it got down to like seven at night, but it's been kind of mild otherwise. And the next couple of weeks look to be pretty mild as well. So we want to do this and not miss this window of opportunity. I'm going to try and put just about half the bag down now. And if we need to try to do it again later, then I'll have the other bag to try. This is just an experiment. We've never done this before, but I wanted to walk you through what I have learned and researched about it and what results we're going to get from this. So like I mentioned, the ideal time is from February 1st through March 10th. We are a little bit early, but we want to get that cycle of freezing and thawing. When it freezes at night, it, the ice comes upward out of the ground, bringing soil with it, and which is going to help incorporate that seed into the ground, which to me sounds ideal with this hard clay that we have here. So I'm hoping that is helpful to it as well. So this process of the thawing and freezing is called heaving. Timing is kind of important. I think it kind of depends on what type of grass you are seeding, but if you do too early and you have a super cold spell, then it could take your grass. But if you do it too late, then you miss that window of opportunity and the benefits of frost seeding. Frost or freezing will actually not hurt your seeds. Your seeds will lay dormant on your soil until that soil temperature is the ideal time for that soil, for that seed to germinate. But what could hurt it is if you are not using a cool season grass. Okay, so what I'm finding is a lot of people don't know about frost seeding, which obviously I didn't until a year ago. But when we go to ask at the stores, they're like, no, you cannot lay this seed right now. It's not going to come up, <laughs> you know. So sometimes when you come across, especially an older generation, they are just so stuck in the way. It's kind of like what I have dealt with in the past about learning about raised bed gardening and square foot gardening. They don't know about it and they kind of don't want to know about it. And so they don't look past it into that information. And it's kind of the same way for frost seeding. I don't know, this may be a complete failure after we do it, but we're gonna try it and I'm willing to try it and I'm open to try it and learning what we can do. When you go to the stores, you may come across people that say, absolutely not, you cannot lay this seed right now. And if you're like me, you're gonna say, okay. <laughs> and you're gonna get the bag of seed anyway, and you're gonna come home and you're gonna lay it and just see what happens. So the only thing that we really wanna have with our pasture as far as prep work is it to be very low to the ground. So either take your mower and cut it very, very low to the ground because you want that seed to be able to reach the ground. We don't have that issue here. Our horses have already grazed it pretty low. And uh, I am going to put, this is a big area, I'm not going to put straw on the entire thing, but I do have a couple bales that we usually keep on hands for our chickens. And I am going to use that in just an area where it is really muddy. There's no grass and it won't even cover that whole area. It's more so just for the experiment of does the straw help it come up or not? Is there a difference? All right, so let's talk about the type of grass seed that I'm laying today. I am laying a, an orchard grass and a clover, a white clover. So the orchard grass is a cool season perennial grass. It will germinate in temperatures of 50 to 65 degrees. So the next two weeks is what I'm seeing. We are right in that 
area of temperature. So we'll see what happens. This is actually the type of hay we use. We use an orchard grass hay for our horses. And so what I'm hoping this helps with, especially recently with hay prices and trouble finding hay, is this will come up during the cooler seasons and give our horses some pasture to eat rather than having to go and purchase as much hay or utilizing as much hay for them in their stalls. Obviously, we're still going to need some hay there. I don't plan on cutting this to use it for hay. I simply just want to get a pasture established. Orchard grass, like I mentioned, is a cool season grass. So it goes dormant above 82 degrees. I saw some things 90 degrees. Either way, when the heat picks up, the orchard grass will go dormant. But I do plan, if this works well, to come in maybe a little bit later and add in some, like a fescue mix too, so that we have some grass during the summertime as well. I'm also adding in that clover, which I'll talk about in a second. So your soil temperature is typically 10 degrees or so less than the temperature in the air. So obviously our soil is going to be a little bit colder, but like I said, it'll just sit there until the soil temperature is at the ideal temperature. So with this being a cool season grass, I'm hoping any frost when it comes up won't hurt it because it's meant for the cooler temperatures. If we had something like a fescue, obviously that may not make it during those uh, very cold temperatures. Okay, so let's talk about the white clover that I'm going to be using. I am going to lay this incredibly lightly. Horses love clover, but it does carry a higher sugar content, which I'll talk about in a minute, especially if you have a horse that has foundered previously like ours has. I also don't want clover creeping into my lawn. So I'm gonna lay this lightly and say a prayer that it doesn't end up in our yard. <laughs> but clover does help with the overall quality of the pasture and the grass. Clover adds nitrogen back into the soil, which is key for grass. So it does reduce the need to fertilize with a high nitrogen fertilizer. It also stays very lush and green looking, so I'm hoping this pasture is going to be looking like that. So like I mentioned, it does carry a higher sugar content. So we have had a horse that has previously foundered, which means she can't have high sugar content uh, in grass, in feed, or anything like that. If we put her out to pasture, she's got to have a mask on. So I'm a little bit nervous about that, but I am going to seed it very lightly just to kind of see what happens. But when you think about the grass, when it is grazed so shortly like this, the sugar content in it is higher. And so by putting in the clover and increasing that nitrogen in the soil and that making that soil a lot better, it gives the grass more nutrients to use because when grass doesn't have the nutrients that it needs, it won't grow. And so it'll keep all that sugar in it. I hope I'm explaining this, you know, well, <laughs> uh, but it keeps that sugar when it's lower like that. Hopefully adding that uh, nitrogen into the soil will help this grass grow and overall use that sugar in the grasses to help it grow and in return won't hold all of that sugar. Does that make sense? So with all that being said, we also have a bag of old seed that is just, I think, a fescue. And I'm going to open that and see. We've had it for quite a while. The bag has been rained on, so I don't know how viable it is. We are actually going to put that also down over near the barn. Just a trial to see what happens uh, because it's just been sitting in our shed. So we'll use that, see what happens. In this field, we're going to do the entire field and we're going to lay down the, um, the orchard grass and then we'll come over top and lay the clover very, very finely. And then in some of this muddy, muddy area, we are going to lay down that straw as much as area as we can cover with like two and a half bales. And then what I'm going to do is keep the horses out of here, except for when we come and ride, uh, hopefully later today and tomorrow, we'll ride the horses through here to hopefully pack down, at least in some areas, uh, some of that seed into the ground. And um, we'll see what that does. So I'm going to go get the tractor. I've got my brother here helping me today. He's actually going to be on the tractor doing this. And um, so let's get this stuff laid. I'll keep you updated. 
uh, as the next couple weeks go along of how this works. It's really great. I'm standing here at the second spot that we just did. So this is where the fescue grass is going. I wanted to keep them completely separate because I wanted to be able to clearly see the results between the two and what happens. This seed that we put right here may not have been viable, so nothing may happen. Uh, again, it's a fescue, uh, so it does prefer the cool, uh, warmer temperatures rather than the cooler. So. We'll see what happens. We used just a little bit uh, uh, over half of the orchard grass seed over there. I will save the rest. If it does start coming up good, I may go lay a second coat down uh, in the areas where it may not be coming up as good. I only had two bales of straw, so I just laid those just as an opportunity to compare and contrast how they're coming up differently, uh, if, if there even is a difference. As far as the clover goes, we uh, set the cedar on uh, one, and because it was such a tiny seed, it was just pouring out. I think if I had the opportunity to do it again, I might do it by hand or with maybe a handheld broadcaster uh, because that one, it was just pouring out. And so I only used half the bag uh, because I did not want to get a ton of that in there just to kind of see how that comes up. But for the orchard grass, we started it on 10 because I wanted to lay it very heavily, uh, but it was almost too heavy. And so we went down to seven for the more bare spots. And then we did about five, four or five uh, was the setting we used for the spots that had some grass to it, uh, but we wanted to be able to incorporate that. So we did it a little bit lighter. We did end up getting stuck <laughs> because we were using that uh, lawnmower, but luckily we got that out. And so I just did that area by hand. But um, so overall it went good. And so now all we got to do is just wait and see what happens. I will do an update on this um, in, in the next couple weeks. And if there's anything that happens, uh, and we'll kind of give you our opinion on it and what the next step is. And then hopefully uh, a little bit later, we'll add in some fescue to mix in over there, or maybe a little bit of a summer pasture over there. So I'm anxious to see what happens. Uh, like I said, just an experiment. Um, so we're going to get these horses saddled up here and I think go for a little ride in this pasture to kind of pack that stuff in. Thank you all for watching and we will see you next time.